Let's now it's clear. Okay, Stephen, you will start the class now. Sorry, I was late. Sorry, I apologize. Yes, please, Steve, start. Okay, sir. So, uh, today I'm presenting uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. So, introduction, hemorrhagic cystitis is defined as uh, lower uh, urinary tract symptoms that includes hematuria and irrelevant voiding uh, symptoms in result from the damage of the bladder and uh, <coughs> Stephen, we cannot see your slides. Okay. You can see, sir. Um, I cannot. If it's finished, just talk. My wrist, wrist, the chain, my dear. Can you see, sir? Uh, no. Let me see. Uh, can anybody see them? Yes, sir. We can see, sir. Ah, okay. So that's fine. That's fine. Please. Uh, sir, can, yeah, five plus must be five plus one. Enlarge one. Go ahead, Stephen. Please. Okay, sir. So, hemorrhagic cystitis is defined by uh, lower urinary tract. Uh, symptoms that includes hematuria and uh, irritative voiding. Uh, symptoms it result from the damage of the bladder, transitional epithelium, and, and uh, blood vessels by the toxin, uh, pathogens, and radiation, drugs, or disease. So, definition hemorrhagic cystitis is an inflammation of the uh, bladder defined by lower urinary tract symptom that uh, include dysuria, hematuria and hemorrhage. So grades. So if you see grades, uh, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4 are there. In grade 1, uh, we can see microscopic uh, bleeding, but uh, it will be not visible. So grade 2 will be uh, visible bleeding will be there. And uh, grade 3, uh, bleeding with small clots. Small, small clots will be present. So grade, grade 4 will be like uh, clots and large amount of uh, uh, big clots will be present. And also uh, there will be a blockage in the urinary flow. When patient is passing, so there will be a blockage will be present. So manifestation. So we can see in grade one uh, microscopic uh, hematuria, and grade two microscopic hematuria also microscopic uh, hematuria will be present. Grade three microscopic uh, hematuria with blood clots, and grade grade four will be like a renal impairment will be there due to uh, urinary tract obstructions. And uh, if we see the causes, so mainly in our BMTU, like uh, we are using uh, cyclophosphate. So cyclophosphate also uh, is the main uh, that uh, will leads to the urinary bladder infection and also hemorrhagic cystitis. And uh, any patient is undergoing for uh, uh, radiation. So that patients are very risk for uh, uh, this thing and also uh, infections and uh, virus also like adenovirus, uh, BK virus, candidiasis. So this all will be uh, causing the hemorrhagic cystitis. So how we will diagnose? Diagnostic. So we will collect the history collections and uh, if anything is there, so we will send uh, urine culture and urine protein. So from that also we can identify and CT scan, MRI, and ultrasound image studies of the bladder. So, cystoscopy. 
so if we see signs and symptoms so signs and symptoms uh, like uh, patient will be having a persistent urge for urine uh, so and loss of bladder control so there will be no control in bladder and uh, experiencing the pain while passing urine so whenever uh, he passes the urine so he will be having a very much pain with a burning sensation and ex extreme it will be like a smell smell will be present extreme strong smell will be present so fatigue due to uh, anemia vagus pain in the lower abdominal uh, pubic area uh, and also will be in the pelvic region the patient will be complain of pain so if you see the treatment for uh, pain we will give the analgesis and if any infection is there so we will uh, see with the uh, culture report and we will give the antibiotics and cystotomy opening of the bladder in treatment of clot evacuation so suprapubic uh, catheter with uh, for the um, bladder irrigation so will allow the uh, the clots will come outside of the bladder so whenever we are uh, doing irrigation so slowly the clots will be loose and it will come outside of the bladder and uh, prevention of uh, recurrent and uh, long term uh, uh, long term monitoring of the symptoms and also antibiotic we will use if any infection are there and antifungal and antiviral may be used for this type of infections so if we see the complications uh, chronic or uh, recurrent urinary tract infection uh, hematuria polynephritis and uh, acute renal failure will be there uh, later complications if we not uh, treat properly uh, and uh, candidemia sepsis and uh, bladder rupture adenocarcinoma so how we will prevent so if we are using uh, cyclophosphamide uh, we should uh, mainly concentrate on the messina dosage and also loading dose uh, starting will start the messina so we, we need to concentrate and we need to maintain the patient io strictly and also uh, we should advise the patient uh, good uh, fluid rich nutrition to the patient and also uh, patient should consume more water so that's all thank you if any doubt uh, can i ask hello Thank you. Okay, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Um, yeah. So, I just uh, how many kids with severe hemorrhagic cystitis um, have we seen recently? For example, in in Bangalore, uh, Sandeep, would you how frequently how frequent is it uh, right now? Uh, sir, compared to PTH, uh, we have slightly increased number. Uh, that's why before this, uh, you are joining the call. I was discussing with Sister Azra also. So practice-wise, we have not changed anything. So uh, slightly number has gone up compared to PTH. So you're talking about hemorrhagic cystitis with clots. So the severe. No, no, no not no with clots. So that's a very less. So over the last. Uh... I don't know, three years, Sandeep, do you remember how many had bad hemorrhagic well. cystitis, the one that it really caused uh, pain and difficulty urination? It's very less, sir. Like I think one, uh, two or three maybe, it's very less. Okay. And how about you, Azra? Do you remember, how many do you remember 
in the last couple of years uh, that had bad hemorrhagic cystitis. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, two to three patients uh, have a severe hemorrhagic cystitis with clots and uh, blood with bladder irrigation. And uh, uh, like we have one patient, uh, Abdul Wahab, uh, uh, he had a severe uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. And um, uh, I, I mean, two to three patients have a history. In and our you remember if there were early after transplant or were late, let's say we're late, I mean, after more than a couple of weeks? Uh, uh, yes, sir. It may be uh, uh, post BMT, um, next uh, two to three, in within two to three weeks. Okay. Now, because um, so as um, Stephen has mentioned, there are really two types of hemorrhagic cystitis. One is due to cyclophosphamide directly, and uh, I think is largely preventable by proper hydration and making sure the, the child uh, uh, doesn't uh, retain urine. And that's why we try to give cyclophosphamide in the morning so that the, the time in which these uh, byproducts of cyclophosphamide peak and tend to cause damage to the bladder war is uh, <clears throat> is like five to five to ten hours after the administration of cyclophosphamide and during that time we really need to make sure that the child doesn't sleep and is active and he pees um, frequently and and that but that hemorrhagic cystitis normally would occur early would occur within uh, a couple of weeks, especially also when the platelets are low. And then there is another type of hemorrhagic cystitis, which may be predisposed by cyclophosphamide, but not really caused by it, which is uh, the one from uh, BK virus. And that tends to occur later in more in immune suppressed patients, like those that undergo haploidentical transplant or those that reject and um, and so there's sort of the most severe one is actually the one normally that occurs and 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 persists uh, due to to viral infection, generally BK virus. Uh, any of the nurses here remember from Bang from Bangalore at the times of PTH remember. Uh, maybe Sandeep, you do, or maybe you don't, I don't remember. Deepika. Deepika, Deepika. very well. Yes. You remember her? Yes, sir. Ah. Can you ask? Okay, so Deepika is a very, very interesting example of uh, what actually I think is the best way to manage hemorrhagic cystitis, and Stephen has alluded to. So hemorrhagic cystitis has been treated for with many, many different things from blood irrigation with all sorts of stuff to hyperbaric oxygen to you name it. Uh, they even arrived to, to a, a cystectomy so to remove the whole bladder or cauterize the arteries irrorating the bladder. And I think we had a child, uh, Depika, who had uh, the, the worst hemorrhagic cystitis I've ever seen. She was, um, she was peeing pure blood. And, uh, and at, at one point, the blood uh, clotted into the, the bladder and uh, obstructed the urinary flow. And she went into renal failure. So we had tried... Uh, to put uh, Foley catheters, uh, even three ways through her urethra. But of course, they, they were not very useful. So we brought her on an emergency basis to the operating theater. She had a, a cystotomy, so the, the bladder was open, the, the clot was removed, and she had a sovrapubic stent, a sovrapubic uh, big Foley catheter, of course, quite bigger than, than anything that could be passed through the urethra. 
eventually she did well, even though the major damage she had beside the little scar, uh, of course, in the in the in the pubic area, um, was that she. I think she still may have some urinary incontinence at night. So I think the lesson here is that hemorrhagic cystitis, when it's severe and, and causes intravesical clots, has to be treated aggressively. Now, many uh, nephrologists are reluctant to do it, but if it's not done and there is a urinary obstruction, the child will die. So, uh, and we had a, actually a case in Islamabad, I'm sure Azra remembers it well. Malia. Yeah, Malia, that, sir. Yes, but also another case in uh, Malia was, I think, was in PIMS. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, she uh, eventually did okay. But then we had one in, um, in Ant who died, and the nephrologist was very, very sort of yes, convinced sir. that, that, uh, that uh, we could not do a cystotomy. Yes, sir. That was the Abdul Wahab I have uh, yeah, discussed. Because it was too dangerous. Of course, also dying is dangerous. So, yes, <laughs> um, so, so that's a problem. Convincing often is convincing the nephrologist, who often has never seen hemorrhagic cystitis that bad, that um, with the aggressive cystotomy, removal of the clot and, uh, and sovrapubic catheter, eventually they will improve. And, uh, and the, the main, uh, so there are, no, there are not many antivirals that work for BK virus. So somebody claimed that cytophobia works, but is really very questionable. And, uh, and uh, what, but uh, what really is important is to try to decrease immunosuppression as much as possible. So anyway, the bottom line is that hemorrhagic cystitis, even though is a dramatic thing, is very scary to the parents, of course, it's very understandable. It can cause a lot of pain to uh, patients, of course, more boys than girls, but to both. And, uh, and uh, we should not be too, too scared about placing a sovrapubic catheter, because at the end of the day, if you try to mess around with large follies in the urethra, you may cause urinary retention uh, when they grow older. So, um, so the bottom line is that uh, when you have a severe hemorrhagic cystitis, it's treatable. They may need transfusions even more than once a day because they can really lose a lot of blood. But if we can keep up with transfusion and do proper blood irrigation, uh, most of them will recover. So this uh, case in Bangalore, the PICA was, uh, actually the problem was that the central line was not placed where we thought it was and she did not receive hydration with high dose cyclophosphamide. And, and that's why she developed such an awful hemorrhagic cystitis. So it was both due to improper